Hey everybody, I'm Josh. The wind's picking up a little bit today, but uh, hopefully uh, I can get through this video. I've been thinking a lot about purpose. And obviously purpose and suffering are, are two main themes in my videos. And that is because I've always struggled to understand my purpose. And I think so many of us have. There's, there's plenty who don't. But if you're watching videos like this, you probably have. And obviously, I've mentioned in my other videos how suffering has been just constant in my life, especially for the last 15 years or so. And really, it's taught me more than I ever could have learned without it. It's been a gift for me. As bad as it is, you know, constant pain, family dying off, family sick, uh, you know, just one thing after another, living in poverty, all those fun things. They're awful. They're awful. They really are. And if you're going through that, I, I really want to comfort you so much, but just know, and this information might be at least a little bit of comfort to you. Because I know you probably won't believe it, but all that suffering will lead to your purpose. If you don't get so caught up in the darkness, you will find your purpose within it. But why is it so hard for us as a society to find purpose? Well, the big thing is technology. Every time we jump on our smartphones, which is way too much or jump on a video game <clears throat> excuse me still pollen season it was 85 two days ago and now it's now it's like 60 something uh uh but anyway so when we jump on our smartphones or video games we are not using the part of our brain that we need to use for spiritual health because we're not really connecting to others and we're not connecting to a deeper part of ourselves that that ponder the the deeper meanings in life i was watching uh i, w I watch a lot of random videos and some person mentioned how they were they were a gamer i believe and um uh, they were talking about how the only time they really seem to have deep thoughts was when they're kind of in the shower because they're they're not really bringing their technology and their, their phones into the shower with them. <laughs> At least hopefully most, most of you aren't. Uh, so that was the only time they had really to sit and think. And we used to have <clears throat> those moments all the time. Even when I was a kid, we didn't have anything except for when Super Nintendo came out when I was, when I was still pretty young, but or not super, regular Nintendo, the first Nintendo. And that's when it all seemed to start going downhill. Because people weren't going outside to play anymore. People weren't going and making tree forts and, and doing all this fun stuff as much as they had. And the more video games advanced and the more technology advanced, the less and less I saw friends. And it really just stops that deep thought and all we can do is we get to a point where we're so lost after just being just immersed in this technology and everything for so long and eventually we're like well where do I find this purpose so where do we look we look on videos and I appreciate you looking for my video but I want to tell you I can't lead you to, I might be able to help you unlock your spirituality, but I cannot lead you to God. No man can lead you to God. There's, there's people who can lead you to your spirituality. And a lot of times, look at cult leaders. So cult leaders realize that this spirituality is such, such an enigma, but they 
figured out a way to kind of just connect to it and help others connect to it. And they would, they would help these people understand a whole entire world that they'd never known before. And when they realized they had this power over people, because, I mean, that's like giving somebody the best drug you can imagine. So when they found they had this power over people, then they became the cult leader and it just degenerated into something just awful. But the people, they were so grateful that they showed them the way to their spirituality. They almost looked at them as like a prophet, as a false messiah or something. This is what you have to look for. I see it a lot in mega churches. I see it a lot in cults. I see it a lot in really in atheists and uh, new age spirituality and, and all kinds of stuff. They lead you to this set of beliefs, this, this personal philosophy, and they make you think, hey, this is the only way. And they make you think, I am the only way you're going to find that enlightenment and that deeper meaning. And it really is, it's, it's awful. Do not trust in man. You can absolutely scour, use, use your phone, read books, whatever. Just look for the philosophies and the spiritual, the religions and the spiritualities that, that call to you and investigate them. Go through all of them and see which one is calling you the most. Now, I happen to think that Christianity, for me, is absolutely the only way. But that's the only way to my salvation, and that was the only way I got to God. But I absolutely used other philosophies and other spiritualities to get there. Uh, I used kind of ideas from Buddhism and meditation and transcendental meditation. I used ideas from spirituality and kind of investigated them in my own life. And if there was something that worked for me, I took it and I used it in my own personal spiritual journey. Because these things are there. Everything in life, everything we do we are like aliens watching others to see how to be human. And spiritual people who are, find, who are searching for that higher meaning especially feel this way. Nobody understands you. You don't understand yourself. So you watch what others do and you take what others do and you just act out your own little way of how you think that should be done. We all build upon each other, but we're all supposed to build upon each other. That's what we're here for. From language to technology, it's all somebody else's work that, that came before us. And we either use it for our better purposes, for our purposes, or we build upon it ourselves. That is what I really do think, especially the main religions and the text from them and a lot of the philosophies and spiritualities and and all that good stuff we all have to investigate and find out what's best for ourselves now it's going to it's going to be a long and really confusing journey at times and you're going to probably just give up and say, well, it's just not going to happen to me and I'm not going to connect with God. Don't force it. You can't force anything. You can't force yourself to have a spiritual awakening or else we'd all just be having spiritual awakenings all the time. You can't force that. This is pretend life is like a video game. And in the video game, you have to beat each level before you advance to the next. And as you advance, you, you acquire different knowledge and different tools to help you get through that level. And then each level, you're getting more and more knowledge, and that turns to wisdom. 
and that turns to just pure instinct and you have all these tools now available at your disposal and pretty soon you're at the higher levels and you're just flying through it like nothing's wrong but you'll get stuck you'll get stuck on some level and you're like i can't beat this level and that's the level that is the most challenging level is sometimes the most rewarding because without a challenge what does it mean if if you played a video game and you got everything you wanted whenever you wanted what fun would that be it is all it's all a journey for us you have to soak up that experience soak up whatever wisdom you can from all these sufferings and all this failure in life and you have to make your own path you have to find your own path now understand life is like a river and our souls these bodies are just vessels for our souls that we're floating upon and so when we float down this river, we're all going down the same river. But we all have a very unique path, a very unique way of floating down the river, even though it seems like we're doing the same thing as everyone else. You're, you're absolutely going to have to emulate other people. You emulate other people when you talk, when you do almost anything in life. There's very few things that are original anymore. And we feel like, well, since there's nothing original, what good is my life? Because I, I'm not, I can't offer anything new. But you're not trying to offer something new. That's not what it's about. We're here to experience everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. We have to experience it all because it all has meaning. It all has meaning for your purpose. And don't be so hard on yourself. Like I said, you cannot force it. So don't be forcing yourself saying, I haven't found my purpose in 50 years of my life or whatever, or 30 years. And it's been, it's just not going to happen. So I just give up. I'm just going to be an, an atheist and I'm going to just not care about spirituality at all. Not even ponder the deeper questions. Not, not worry about any of that because all of it's meaningless. That's the way you get. You get spiteful, you get bitter, and it beats you down. And like I said, when you're beat down to the point of surrender, you're either going to surrender to the darkness or you're going to surrender to the light. And you always have the choice. But guess what? The road you're on, you can always switch that road. There's always, what does Stairway to Heaven say? Uh, there's always chance to change the road you're on amazing song you need to embrace what you can in life take the light enjoy all the comedy enjoy all everything that brings joy to your life and everything that brings light to your life just soak it up because you're going to need it for the hard times and if you're feeling awful and if you're in pain or whatever and you're looking, go play with your, your pet or go walk in the, walking in the woods is so underrated now. And I, I, I know I've said this so much over and over. You have to get out in nature. This is my backyard right here and, and it's under construction right now because they're building a greenway on it. So you can see like... All kinds of trash and markers. Make I understand that not all of you live in a place where you can just go walk right out into nature. And really, I mean, the nature behind me is they're going to probably tear it all down soon anyway. I just have my little patch of land and my little, my little creek here. And there'll be people buzzing all around me and it'll be awful. You're in a city. Go and find every single park that you can and maybe maybe once or twice a week go and visit a new park and just do that as much as you can get get to wherever if you don't have access to 
something where you can drive farther away to get to some of the parks, then just get to the ones you can get to. There's got to be some kind of little oasis of nature near you. Find it and use it. Because you need to sit there and don't, don't stay on your phone the whole time. It's all right if you want to play some music or something or, or whatever. But if you're sitting there in the middle of the trees, looking at your phone and, and texting others and, you know, looking at social media, that's just a waste of, of the time that you have out in nature. Do something positive out in nature. You're not going to find meaning on this phone. You're not going to find meaning from a life coach. You're not going to find meaning from any of that. The only one who can show you meaning is God. And the only way to find God is to stop looking at your smartphone, stop looking at the TV, stop looking at anything except for what's deep inside of you and your soul. Because that's where your connection to God is. And if you've got a place to go that's solitary and you can go to get away, then that's great. If it's not in nature, that's fine. Whatever, whatever brings you peace, whatever you can do to meditate the, this noise in life away. Because that's all it is, is noise. It really is. It's all noise, and we need to, we need to tune out that noise. Because it will just overcome you, and, and that's all you'll hear from now on. If you just let it just resonate in your head. Tune it out. Listen to the wind. Listen to the birds. Listen to the animals. It is freeing. It is, but it is something that, that takes a long time to get, for me it took so many, I can't even tell you how many years I was out in the woods. I kicked over a garnet one day, a rock with a garnet on it one day, and I got this, I got excited and I started looking for gemstones. If you have gemstones in your area, go, go start looking for rocks that made me want to be out in the woods even more Then I was looking for edible mushrooms. I was looking for edible plants and, you know, trying to identify different animals. I've seen all kinds of crazy animals and, you know, it, it is, there's always a reason to be out here, but make it fun. Make it so you're not going to just be bored. Like, Oh yeah, I'm going to take a walk and think about things. Make, go, I know I said to get off your phone, but go geocaching. It still is a way to get out in nature and you're on a treasure hunt out in nature. There's so many things to do out here. But just to be out, take time to be alone doing the stuff. Being alone in nature to me is one of the most important things you can do to connect to God. Talking to others who have had spiritual awakenings or who are religious leaders or spiritual leaders, that is good, but nothing beats the wisdom that's already in your own mind that you have to unlock and only God can unlock it. And you have to have that personal relationship and you have to work on it. Just like every relationship, it does not come easy, but once you have it, it's the most rewarding experience of your life and every other relationship you have, good or bad, will just be so much better once you have that relationship with God. Because it is the only one that matters. You can't love without the love that God allows you to have. You can't feel anything but suffering and pain without God. He gives you this because he wants you to succeed. He wants you to find him. He can't just come out and, and just reveal himself to you because that would defeat the purpose of whatever greater plan that he has here. I know I'm going on a, a too long probably. <laughs> and hopefully this wind isn't drowning out all my voice today, but I really do appreciate all of you that I've met in the comments through, through my videos. And I really do wish that uh, you were right here with me and I could, I could just talk to you one-on-one -on -one and you seem like amazing people. So find the amazing people around you. All right, God bless. We'll talk to you soon.